All right, so where where do we start? I think what both of us saw and then and then truly felt through the entire process, even during the consultation, you could tell he just trusted in our vision. For me and for you as, as artists, someone saying, okay, listen, I trust you guys, do whatever you want. It's almost scary, right? Because <laughs> we can really go overboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we took the, the space, we made it its fullest potential. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. We talk about this collaboration and stuff a lot, you know, especially through Aquascape. You you do it all the time, whether yeah. you're in Massachusetts. We do it a lot together in right. San Diego or in Arizona and Utah and different places like that. But even tapping into some of the local CACs, right? Like we needed fabric, yeah. right? We needed fabric and we needed it now. And and uh, so Craig McBride came through and got us some fabric. You can't go without recognizing the team. That's the only way this happens. So to do this in 12 days, you'd had to have the right mix of people. We knew we had a hard line. We hit it and it's because of the guys we brought in, like Jay and Eric from Stonebridge came in, yeah. Billy Harmon came in, of course we had Ralph. I mean, you can't, <laughs> I can't go anywhere without Ralph. Yeah. And then you and I and Anthony. And it has to happen when we do these traveling jobs. Yeah. You try to dot all your I's, cross all your T's, but no matter what, you're forgetting stuff, right? And so amazing customers yeah. that are extremely accommodating helps, and that's been true no matter where we've gone, and then an amazing team. It doesn't happen without either one of those. This, that for me, like that's what, on cue, the dog. <laughs> I love big projects. Well, it allows us to be creative, right? And get to do things and try things that we don't get to do all the time. Yeah. Which like takes us probably to the next part. Like, what's your favorite part? So let's walk through this. What we started with was a blank canvas. When we got here, like you said, he's like, you guys do what you think you would want to do. We're like, let's take it out of the middle of the front yard and let's put it here by the barn. And that opened up a huge Pandora's box because yeah. we're like, what if we put, <laughs> what if you made your office at the barn? And Matt took all that to heart and really did that. So this, like, I don't know if it's the setting, I don't know if it's the intake, a bit like the intake bay is awesome the wetland filter is awesome the stone stairs are awesome the waterfall is incredible so let's the, the bridge like i just keep going <laughs> far end of the pond by the bridge so that is the waterfall that's going to be the end of a 120 foot stream which is phase two we're coming back for that waterfall i love the simplicity of it i love the sound right and that's what's so cool we have two waterfalls that have the same amount of flow we're running two five and nine sld pumps on both sets of waterfalls and you you'll see like the drastic difference in sight yep. and sound just by the way we put the rocks in and how we shape the water it is crazy so the same size pump on both of them and two completely different looks completely different sound so that that stream waterfall we'll call it we took two of our main character bowlers and we kind of sloped them into each other creating a pinch point mm -hmm. so we can get that thick thick water and that water's like this thick 
coming through there. It's really, really thick. You want a waterfall, like, or I personally always want a waterfall close to a bridge. Yeah. So when you're crossing the bridge, it gives you a reason to kind of stop, pay attention to a little bit what's around you. You don't want to just cross the bridge and like just get to the other side. You want to slow down for a second. So the fact that the water is 18 inches deep through there, the fish can still get through that spot, hang out by that Babbly Brook waterfall. It's just going to be a cool spot. And to, right to the right of that, we did that beach area. And really the number one reason that Matt and Julie wanted this pond out front was for the dogs. And they wanted them to be able to interact with this. He's like, can we put a beach in? Because they got Duke who's an older dog. Yep. He's like, he would like to walk in there and just kind of chill out. And that's what he did. Yes. So that brings us to the crossing. Mm -hmm. We kind of went back and forth on this a little bit. Like, should we take one of these large slabs and just do it? The best part about that bridge is actually how quick it went together. We were both kind of nervous. Like this is going to take us a day, day and a half. And sometimes it can, right? Yeah. Like you just don't know if the elevations are going to work out, how much you're going to have to pull that liner back and forth, yeah. set up your base material. But all the elevations worked out. The stones like just married to each other perfectly. They look like they were part of the same yes. rock and water really just carved out that section in between, which is so cool. Just having that eight inch or seven inch gap in between gives it such an amazing look, especially at night with the lights that are underneath mm -hmm. it. And as the water gets clearer, it's gonna look awesome yeah. and magical. Well, and then you put that, we even kind of argued a little bit and we argue a lot, <laughs> a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> but we enjoy it, right? And, and uh, but we were talking about the rock just on the other side of the bridge and how I felt it was a little bit too tall of a step. Didn't disagree with that. It looked good. It was just a tall step. But what's great about it is it becomes a bench Come on that yep. side. So you can sit on it. So it worked out right. And I don't always tell Jack that he was right. In fact, I never tell Jack he was right. <laughs> and I'm not going to start. But <laughs> So the bridge takes you over to what's going to be one of the cooler patios that I've ever seen by a pond. We set that big giant arched wall off of the man cave space. There's going to be a big natural stone patio that comes in cantilevers just out over that front wall there. And because we were able to set the water level within two inches of the top of that, it's really going to feel like you're on water. So bringing that water up high was, was import, is an important design element and that's what we put the block wall in for and cutting those lights into the wall gives it such a clean look yeah. where you're standing over it, you don't see the fixture, but it just has a nice glow coming yep. out. I think the addition of adding some of those big rocks in there to break up the monotony of the, what that patio is gonna look like is gonna be really important. Adding some areas for aquatic plants along there too is just gonna look fantastic. We can't show it to you now because it's not done, but in phase two it will be. Yeah, so then you're looking out over this pond, larger than we thought it was gonna be. I started digging. You got a little carried away. The day before you got <laughs> here, and I got a little carried away. We used a 50 by 100 liner, and we had just enough at both ends. I think we had eight inches left on either end. Yeah, so we used 100 <laughs> feet of liner from end to end. This pond is every bit of 80 plus feet long by the time you go down yeah, and back yep. up again. The reason this one's designed that way is it's gonna tie into the stream. So in phase two, it's really just gonna look like there's a giant stream running through his yard. And we talk about this all the time. We don't really build ponds. Ponds are isolated bodies of water. There's not water coming in, there's not water leaving. Right. Um, we build stream systems, right? Right. Water's coming in from one end and leaving It's constantly another. Yeah. flowing, like into some sort of an intake and then back up to the top and it's flowing again. This is definitely not a, just a pond. This is a lifestyle out yeah. there. Then we get to the big waterfall. And and as big as it is, I think, but like a lot of people would have said, okay, I got two five to nine pumps. Let's stretch this thing out really wide. Yeah. Let's make this thing six, seven feet wide. Let's have water crashing all over the place. The way we built it, it looks like it belongs there, yeah. right? It's very to scale. It's not overwhelming. It doesn't overpower any other part of the feature. It's just part of the entire thing. There's so many other little parts, right? Like the addition of the retaining wall into the intake bay. The intake bay being bigger than most people's ponds, yeah, right? the intake bay alone is so awesome. <laughs> like just watching all those leaves just race <laughs> through there. I mean, you have five, five to nine pumps 
pulling all that water through what about a four foot wide opening in a you're section. You're talking close to 35 or 40,000 gallons an hour coming through there. Yeah, I love the intake bay. I think it's great. It's going to be so easy for him to maintain. I think the stone steps are probably some of my favorite stone steps we've done, and we do those a lot. But having the ability to work with those 12 foot long treads, uh, I mean, those things are insane. And it's funny because Matt had bought those on a whim. Uh -huh. like a, some stone yard was selling out, and he bought these big slabs. They were, they they were, were the old, curb stuff. They were old curb stopper <laughs> and we're like we're gonna use those as steps and he's like I don't get it and then when we started putting it together he's like oh my god I love it this looks amazing Well, the project is incredible. We killed it yeah. as far as, we killed ourselves. We're both saying this is probably my, the story. My source. body hurts a lot. <laughs> but working 12, 13 days in a row, we'll do that. You know, when we come out here, we do this for the memories, we do this for the experiences, but we put our bodies to, to work, right? Yeah. And it was sun up to sundown every single day, and it looks like it. I mean, clearly, we love our jobs. But like you said, the number one reason I love doing these large travel projects is the camaraderie. Yeah. Outside of the project, we love spending time together, and when especially you and I get together and we get to feed off of each other's creative energy, it produces an amazing result. And then having the team around and everybody's just having a great time, it uplifts, I think, everyone. Yeah, attitude. And they all want to do the best they possibly yeah. can. We can have the worst conditions but great attitudes and we still get inspired to do fun stuff, right? And that's what it's really all about. So we will be back here for phase two, which is going to be an incredible project all on its own. Let us know what you would like to see, maybe even phase two. Yeah. Maybe we can pull off something cool. We're talking about some unique different style bridges. We've got some really wide stream areas we're gonna do like when I say wide like 20 foot wide stream areas that then narrow back down eight inches wide in yeah. area and and uh, doing really wide waterfalls and two fountainscapes like yeah. two custom fountainscapes <laughs> yeah. and of course team aquascapes hit the subscribe button and uh See you later bye